Good morning and welcome to another week in our garden. Now if you remember last week I said we'll do from the top greenhouse to the bottom greenhouse and show you what I've done for the vegetable garden. So we're going to start the top greenhouse. As you can see there's quite a few tomatoes. We did have one casualty when a blackbird flew in and I walked in after it and panicked it and it snapped this one off but we'll wait for another shoot to come and then we'll take over there is one actually coming there look so we might just keep that one if one doesn't come there there or there we'll bring that one up there are tomatoes coming on them now now that they've got tomatoes coming on I put a little bit of chalk on top of the pots and then I start feeding but only low dose at the moment it's when they get a full complement on we'll give them more and more feed as they grow these are the cucumbers that one's got its head in the dirt look they're the uh, femme spot there's three of them in here doing quite well all got cucumbers on now the chalk I put on is just blackboard chalk. We got it from the local shop. And I put my gloves on because this is very rough and it, while you're doing it, you can soon rough your finger a bit. Makes it sore. So all I do is just take it round. Doesn't matter if it doesn't go round as long as it's on the top. There you go, that's got my glove look, never mind. There you go. Do about one stick to each pot. I put the chalk on top and let it wash in when we're watering. And it does stop the blossom drop. So if you're losing your blossom, if you give them the chalk, which is calcium, it seems to stop it. I've never had a problem over the years with flower drop or fruit drop if you come to that. And But for years I've been putting chalk on. Now I shall continue that all the way around probably later today. The other thing that I want to tell you is the tomatoes I've put actually in 15 litre pots. We did it last year, we used to use 10 litre, then we changed to 15 and we get better results out of it. Let's make our way down to the fruit cage. Now we're coming to the fruit cage and the early strawberries are beginning to ripen up now. Not so many because I think the early strawberries are sort of coming to the end of their time with us now. So. But we'll get, definitely get this year out of it. As you can see we've got some nice strawberries coming. Nice and early, that one's about ready actually look. Slugs have had them a bit but that'll always be. The later strawberries which are in that row and that row over there are bulking up quite a bit but I always find that they are better croppers actually than the early ones. And the raspberries, these are the first crop, the earlies, there's a lot of fruit on there. If you remember we tied it in in the autumn and we bent all the tops over and stopped them and now that's made the, the bush branch all the way down and so we've got crops from top to bottom. I've also put the pheromone trap up for the raspberry beetle. Nothing in it as yet but we'll keep it up. The late raspberries or the summer raspberries as you can see are growing very well. I see there's a weed in there I'll have to come down and get that. The, uh, they're cropping very well I might have to just put uh, a piece of rope or something round and just hold them in case the wind blows them over. Now the currants have got what I call blister 
beetle on them. It's actually a grub that lives in the back, I don't know if you can see it. It's easily sprayed out. It's a bit like an aphid, but it blisters the top. So if you haven't got a lot, if you just go round and pick them off and burn them. But for these few here that we've got, I think I'll just make a, a little bit of soapy water and see if I can get them off with that. Black currants, they're doing well. Same again, it's got a little bit of that beetle on. This is actually an aphid, not a beetle. But they'll soon be sprayed off. Gooseberries are doing well. I think I'm down to... I've only got two gooseberry bushes now. They was getting a little bit out of hand. Now the blackberries... We changed the frame from a U-shape to a V-shape. So this, what's cropping now, or what's flowering now, is what we tied in from changing the frame. So there's enough there, there's quite a few. Both sides are as full as this with flowers. As you can see, they are setting now, so there will be a crop of blackberries. Now remember with the blackberries, that's this year's crop, all tied in and fruiting well. But next year's crop is here, look. These canes coming up now, these will bear next year's fruit. When we finish cropping with these, I should cut all these canes that are fruited off and tie in the new canes. Now this season with me starting with a better frame, I'll be able to get fill the frame up with the new canes. We couldn't do that last year because it was U-shaped, but this year we will. The blueberries are setting, as you can see, they'd, they've actually got some fruit. There's one or two, I think, that's failed. Oh no, that's a leaf that's failed there. But, uh, we was a little bit concerned about the late frosts on the flowers, but it looks like it looks like they've taken, we've lost some of the leaves in the late frost, but I think the fruit might be all right. That's the problem with the, the late frost. It'll take some of your fruit because it's flowering at the same time as you get the late frost, it will kill them back. Normally, if you have a late frost, your strawberry flowers get a black eye, a black centre instead of a, a yellowy centre and that means that won't crop but this year we've had no black eyes on the strawberries so we'll get some strawberries. We've come out onto the garden as you see the broad beans are doing very very well I see one or two has been blown over we had some terrible winds yesterday that's why we couldn't film yesterday but the broad beans are fine, they're setting well now. These three tomatoes are those three mountain magic that I couldn't find anywhere to put, but they're finished up there. But if you imagine, the beans will be gone before too long, so there'll be plenty of sun and warmth for them. A little bit of lettuce there. That at the back is Lolo Rosso, and this at the front is just the red lettuce. There's a line of little gem there that I just put in there. I think the far one's doing quite well, but I also put some into those bottles at the same time. So we'll have a look at the bottles against out in the garden. Beetroot goes from strength to strength, no problems there. I'm just waiting for them to get a little bit bigger than the golf ball and we'll take one or two for early. Now, the garlic has had a terrible, terrible attack of rust. I took off the very worst of the leaves and I've been, I took a bit of advice. I've put a copper spray on it to try and control the rust. And it seems to be in control, but I've got to wait another week before I can put the next slot on. Now, we had rust on the garlic last year when we had it right down the garden. And so we had new bulbs 
this year and we brought it right up here into this little plot here now this I don't think has ever had garlic in it before so and it's come full of rust so we don't know whether it's in the soil or whether the bulbs I bought which were quite expensive those good bulbs uh, whether they brought it with them I don't know the shallots are doing fine there's one or two over there that have run to seed but while I was talking to the chap about the garlic he says a lot of people have had their onions run to seed because early on we had that really nice weather and the onions grew well and then especially here we had that very very cold weather from the east which cooled the onions down again and then that was for a few weeks so after that it got hot again so with the onions being biannuals they've had their summer and their winter all in one year and now it's come summer again they'll flower and cast seeds so that's why I've been told we've got a lot of onion flowers coming but remember you can always cut the flowers off and as long as you don't try and store the onion and use it more or less straight away from lifting you can still use them we've opened the BMP net for you to have a look inside all the climbers are doing very very well the dwarfs they were standing beautifully until yesterday when we had a lot of wind and it's blown them about a little bit they're, they've actually got peas on them now I might have to just put some sticks in just to hold them up again all the other dwarf beans are doing very well Billavau's beans and peas are now climbing so they're fine and the courgettes they've enjoyed this little bit of rain we've had and they're beginning to grow a bit better now tomatoes are just beginning to grow now you can see they're starting to grow because the tops start to look greener than the bottom leaves bottom leaves faded a little when the transplant but when they start growing again you'll get nice green leaves all that plot there are all crimson crush these this side are the San Marino 3 which are the plum tomatoes they haven't really started growing yet but they are turning green at the top I put the marigolds around the tomatoes and the cabbages I've put as many as I can in well I put in till I run out of plants so there are quite a few marigolds in the garden now the butternut squash are settling down well some are actually beginning to to grow a runner to to come up but what I've been doing um, I have a shop that sells coffee to be a little bit of a coffee shop in there as well and they give me the grounds every week so I put them through a screen just to break them up a little to put round the plants as you can see to keep the slugs down a little I add a few um, slug pellets as you know but I've well run out now let me see what the slugs have done to that so what I do is I sprinkle round all the way around the plant I don't leave a gap because if you leave a gap the slugs will get across it and that, that one needs all the way around I've done this side and now I've just the other side of this frame to do around those but it does seem it does seem to work if you think I put I put the marigolds out yesterday and when I was checking this morning 
there's one or two bitten off already so I need to get a bit of but I'm saving obviously the coffee grounds for for the cropping plants rather than the marigolds but I have tried one or two to see how they'll progress as you can see the celery is standing well now now the celery I do actually water it every day every day I come down with the buckets and put the water on them the leeks in the back they're all standing well now looking nice and green they'll be popping a root or two down now now in this tunnel as you can see there's broccoli at this end and calabrese at the other end I don't know if you can see or not but there is coffee around each one and there's not a lot of slug damage on these I'm touching wood when I say that in this tunnel you can see we've got the onions there are a lot of them are standing well but like I said before there's one or two throwing flowers up but there's nothing I can do for the weather but they look well on this little bed here this will be the carrots and the parsnips the first setting of parsnips didn't come up so I bought some more seed fresh seed and I put those in and I'm sure they'll come up but not yet but the carrots are germinating autumn king too a little bit late but they're fine and what I did I put them in in little groups rather than going along the run so we'll see how they do now I put the net over the top it's only a soft net uh, just to stop the sparrows from dust bathing in it now in this tunnel we've got kohlrabi that's the purple version of it in the center there is some celeriac which is I think I've lost one that's probably the slugs but I got a spare one over there that I'll just bring over there. and at the far end mini coal cabbage in this tunnel we've got a few more Lolo Rosso lettuce some red lettuce it's a, a tight red one the same as what we got up near the broad beans it's very good not a lot bothers it then you've got some summer cauliflowers there not many and at the far end you've got summer cabbage hopefully the summer cabbage and cauliflowers and especially the mini, mini coal cabbages will be finished in time for us to put the winter and spring cabbage in to these plots as these come out we'll put those in it's just a matter of timing to get them ready just in time to drop them in now this double tunnel again we've got the brussels sprouts they're all standing well bar one i see but we've got a spare so i might check I might change that one that was damaged so we get a decent brussel out of it and while I'm doing that I can just hoe it over again you can see round each brussel I've put some coffee grounds although it's cracked a little at the moment with the heat there's not a lot of slug damage to those plants now all the potatoes first second and the light resistant ones are all doing well now we have actually sent for some nemo slug to water on them i'll try and get enough i think i've ordered enough to do all the potatoes and the celery because celery suffers quite bad with the, with the slugs around here so I'll do that as well and any left we'll just put it on the around the cabbages etc 
These are the Swiss chard, if you can remember we set those, they've doubled in size already, there'll be no problem at all. The pumpkins, out of the four we put in, we've lost one, that was slug damage, they actually bit into the stem of the plant and over it went. Now, because I lost one, I have set some more seed, it's still plenty early enough for pumpkin, so we can still replace that. I set six seeds, so we'll have to find a little bit more room, or just thicken them up in the bed. The sweet corn, we've now took the net off. As you can see, it's growing very, very well now. It'll soon be, soon be well up. What I shall have to do though, when it comes to harvest, is put some sort of net back on to stop the squirrels from taking the cobs. The lettuce, these are the same as the ones in with the beetroot. As you can see, these are double the size of the ones out on the bed, so they seem to be working well for having the bottles on. Five shallots there that we had left, so I just pop them in there rather than throw them away. These are the Sapomira. They're doing very well. They look very strong when they're coming up. Very strong. There'll be no plums this year. I'm afraid the tree got some lovely blossom on and that cold blast from the east killed all the blossoms, so no plums. Now in this, this frame, if you remember, we had some shallots left, so I just popped them in. They seem to be doing all right. There's, uh, they're not showing any flowers, so they were well protected while we had the frame closed. <coughs> in this side, remember I was telling you when the garlic is out, I want to put these leeks in. So I'm trying to hold them and then they'll go in when the garlic comes out. Likewise, there's a little bit of celery there, that can go in there as well. This here is celeriac, I was holding it in case any of those have failed, but one's failed, so I take the best of that lot and pop it in. Now we've actually made our way down to the bottom greenhouse, and uh, we'll start with the cucumbers. This is Luisia. And as you can see, they crop in. And remember with these, you can take them, a little bit bigger than those, but you can take them small or let them grow to full cucumber. We'll see you, we'll probably take one small and see how we get on with that. And then decide whether to take them small or wait for them to get big. As you saw last week, quite a few peppers. These are the Californian Wonder sweet bell peppers. I'm trying to find some room out in on the beds to put them on the sunniest place we've got and we'll see if we can get those in. These are China ones. One of the trays I've actually potted up. I'm trying to give the other tray away, but I'm struggling a little bit at the moment. There's some more little gem, and that's that second set pumpkin I put in, they won't be long. This is Lolo Rossa, that'll follow those that we've got out there. Spring onions, they'll throw them out, and a bit of basil at the back, or if you like, basil. These are the aubergines, very, very late set because the first lot failed, but they might make it. If they do, they'll be very late. And the rest of the, these are the bullhorn peppers. That little collection of geraniums or pelagoniums, if you like to call them that. We bought the 10 in a tray and we wanted some more stock the only thing is now, I have to wait for them to flower and put a label in of what colour they are and they're actually for next year bedding, not this year's. If they grow quite well in here through the summer, I might even be able to take some cuttings off them as well, but we'll show you that. 
There's a few chilli peppers there, mainly for other people. We might just keep a couple for ourselves. These are bullhorn peppers. With the, all the ones with the wooden label, I've put them as bullhorn. So you've got bullhorn peppers, they'll soon grow up. They'll be a bit late. But I started potting the best of the Californian wonder to bring, give them a big root and they'll grow well. The only thing is if you put them in a big pot, control the watering. If you get them too wet, you'll rot the root. These are now where I grow the radish. I've tried radish out there and everything seems to attack the radish, even the sparrows. Because of the weather and some of the onion are beginning to throw flowers or go to seed. I've actually purchased a, a little bag of sets. Really, they were trying to get rid of them. They've been reduced that much that I couldn't, I couldn't avoid it. So I popped them in, kept them in the shade, and they're actually showing green now. So they will still make onions, but obviously they won't be huge like the big storing onions. They might be all right, depending on the weather, long summer, we've got more onions to replace those that are flowering. This old clematis, Nelimosa, she grows there every year, never has anything done to it, it just gets on with it. Lovely flowers. Now, that's about it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Sorry if it was a bit long, but I promised to show you everything in which I have done. We'll see if next week we can get one or two other jobs done. And it's time you had a look at those chickens. So, take care everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We'll see you next week. Bye now.